Good evening, I'm Paul Fraser and this is the 7 o'clock news from Bahrain Television. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received at Gudabia Palace today several members of the royal family and senior state officials, during which they reviewed a number of national and international issues. His Royal Highness recalled with appreciation and all efforts and initiatives that have contributed to the development of the kingdom and confirmed the government's approach to achieve the best living standards that meets the needs of the citizens. He also confirmed the government's approach to keep the cost of living within no limits despite economic challenges. He appreciated the role and contributions of Bahrain's men in supporting the development process of the kingdom throughout its history, saying that they are a role model for future generations. The Prime Minister asserted that preserving national gains in all fields requires both collaborative and unified efforts in order to build on the achievements that have already been made. He said regional developments will not affect the government's determination to achieve the best interests of the country and its people, who are the backbone of the nation, to reach the highest levels of accomplishment. His Royal Highness also stressed the necessity of consolidating the values of communication and cohesion amongst the members of Bahraini society in face of those who try to spread sedition and divide, confirming security and stability are the foundation of further achievements. Representative of His Majesty the King, Chairman of the Supreme Council for Women and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa met today with United States Ambassador to Bahrain, William Rubuck. His Highness Sheikh Nasser affirmed the importance of reinforcing joint cooperation between the two countries in all fields and reviewed with the Ambassador several issues related to youth, sport, charity and humanitarian fields. The Ambassador expressed thanks and appreciation to Bahrain and its leadership for its constant keenness to consolidate the existing excellent bilateral relations and expand fields of joint cooperation in all fields. Deputy Premier and Chairman of the Ministerial Legal Affairs Committee, Jamad al Orayad, met today a delegation from the European Parliament led by Mitchell Belfer on the sidelines of the delegation's current visit, which comes at the official invitation of the Council of Representatives Speaker. The Deputy Premier asserted the importance of intensification of such visits to consolidate ties with Bahrain's legislative bodies and to exchange expertise and experience, as well as viewpoints regarding key regional and international issues. He informed the European Parliamentary Delegation about Bahrain's accomplishments since His Majesty the King ratified the National Action Charter, conceded by 98.4% of the people. This falls in line with the ongoing democratic reforms to build a modern state that is proud of its cultural heritage and that is open to human civilizations and cultures. al had also affirmed Bahrain's keenness on boosting its democratic experience, consolidating the cooperation bonds with sisterly and friendly countries countries and contributing to regional and international security, stability and peace. The, de the delegation members thanked the Deputy Premier for the good reception and hospitality, praising the development of Bahrain in all political, economic rights and societal fields and affirming the importance of mutual legal and legislative cooperation. 
Speaker of the Representatives Council, Ahmed Al Mullah, met today with a delegation from the European Parliament, led by Mitchell Belfer, who are currently on a visit to the Kingdom. Al Mullah affirmed the importance of reinforcing joint cooperation and communication with European and international parliaments, so as to shed the light on Bahrain's achievements under the Reform Project and democratic process, in addition to clarify the true image of Bahrain's positive developments. He pointed out the Council's interest in sharing Bahrain's experiences which have reached high levels in various parliamentary fields. The representative speaker confirmed the importance of strengthening joint cooperation and increasing the exchange of official visits to further examine advanced parliamentary experiences and consolidate cooperation with international parliaments. Speaker of the Shura Council Ali Al Salah chaired the weekly meeting today and the meeting approved a report by the Youth Affairs Committee on cancelling the General Organisation for Youth and Sports in order to reduce and regulate government expenses and overcome economic challenges. The Council then approved another report by the Legislative Affairs Committee regarding the reorganisation of the Department of Legal Affairs by providing the Legal Affairs Department with full independence from the Executive Authority. Interior Minister Lieutenant General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa met today with scholars, members of the Shura Council, Council of Representatives and Bahrain Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Editor-in-Chiefs of local newspapers, representatives of the National Institution for Human Rights and a number of other dignitaries. The meeting, which comes in line with community partnership, was also attended by the Chief of Public Security, Major General Tarek Al Hassan and Governors. The Minister delivered a speech in which he Outline the current state of security, highlighting regional situation and the security challenges that affect national security. أصبحت أساليبها مكشوفة ومعلنة ومتكررة في بلدان ومناطق مختلفة من العالم وبالأخص تلك البلدان العربية التي فتحت أبوابها للتعاون والتفاهم مع إيران وإن وجود أي عناصر من القوات الإيرانية على أراضي تلك الدول لا أعتقد بأنه دفاعا عن عروبتها بل هو من منطلق حرصها على مصالحها وتحقيقا لأطماعها الفارسية وإننا لا نوجه أصابع الاتهام لأحد دون وجود الأدلة الدامغة على ذلك وإني أركز في حديثي على أهم التدخلات الإيرانية فقط في الفترة منذ عام 2011 فقد حاولت إيران أن تستغل أي تواجد يتبع لها في مملكة البحرين سواء كان سياسي أو اقتصادي أو حتى اجتماعي من أجل تنفيذ أغراضها التوسعية والتي تراوحت أهدافها بين استهداف أمن الوطن واستغراره باستخدام الأسلحة والمتفجرات والعمل على زعزعة النظام والإضرار بالمصالح الاقتصادية والتأثير على مسيرة التنمية فهناك تأسيس لجماعات إرهابية في البحرين تم تدريبها في إيران والعراق وسوريا وارتباطها بالحرس الثوري وحزب الله الإرهابي وفوق ذلك تقديم الدعم المالي والإسناد بالأسلحة والمتفجرات خلال عمليات التهريب وهذا يشمل التدريب على التصنيع وتخزين المتفجرات وما نتج عن ذلك من أعمال إرهابية وما كان منها موجه ضد رجال الأمن حيث بلغت تضحيات شهداء الواجب 17 شهيد وآلاف المصابين وطبعا ما ترتب على ذلك من عمليات قبل 
أدت إلى محاكمة من تم تشجيعه وإغراءه وتورطوا في تلك العمليات الغادرة والأمر الآخر هو ضرب الوحدة الوطنية من خلال تكريس التطرف المذهبي بقصد تحقيق الفتنة الطائفية بين المواطنين السنة والشيعة ولم يسلم من ذلك شيعة البحرين بعد أن فرضت عليهم ولاية الفقيه وهو موضوع لا تجتمع عليه المراجع الشيعية وبشكل عام فقد تم إغواء من رخصت وطنيتهم وتم تشجيعهم ضد مصلحة بلدهم وهذا ما يعرف بالخيانة الوطنية إضافة إلى محاولة إفشال نهج الإصلاح السياسي في مملكة البحرين الذي يقوده جلالة الملك المفدى حفظه الله ورعاه من خلال إحراف الانفتاح السياسي وإفراغه من نهجه الوطني إلى نهج طائفي وتأسيس ولاءات سياسية لإيران تتمكن من خلالها تحقيق الغالبية النيابية الموالية لها كما هو الحال في عدد من الدول العربية وقد أعلنت إيران بكل أنجهية بأنها تسيطر فعلا على أربع عواصم عربية دون وضع أي اعتبار لأي كيان عربي إن المعلومات التفصيلية والأدلة المادية والنتائج المختبرية للتدخلات الإيرانية في البحرين أكبر من أن تكون معلومات للصحافة والإعلام إنها تمثل تقريرا مهنيا وقانونيا يبين حجم ومدى خطورة التدخلات الإيرانية في الأمن الداخلي البحري والأمر يتطلب استكمال إجراءاتنا اللازمة بهذا الخصوص والسؤال حول من انضووا تحت العباءة الإيرانية أو من ارتموا في أروقة السفارات للتنظير في شأن سياستنا الوطنية وأمورنا السيادية هل يمكن أن يكونوا شركاء في الحياة الديمقراطية والإصلاح السياسي وهل يمكن أن يكونوا مشرعين وقضاء هل هم جديرون بتولي مناصب مفصلية في الدولة أو أن يتم قبولهم في السلك العسكري أو الأمني أيها الإخوة والأخوات إن هؤلاء لم يتحملوا مسؤوليتهم الوطني ولا يمكن أن يكونوا شركاء في بناء مستقبل الوطن إن الأحق بذلك هم الشخصيات الوطنية التي تضع مصلحة البحرين فوق كل اعتبار بقيادة جلالة الملك المفدى حفظه الله ورعاه والذين يحترمون الإرادة الشعبية وقوانين المملكة ودستورها والحمد لله الوطن بخير والمخلصون موجودون وهم الفائزون بإذن الله In line with the leadership's continuous support to the education process and in the presence of Education Minister Dr. Majid al Noemi and Ministers of Works, Municipal Affairs and Urban Planning, Isam Khalaf, the Ministry of Education, took responsibility of Wadi al Sail Primary and Intermediate School for Boys. The four story school includes 38 classes for primary and intermediate branches and accommodates more than 1,300 students and members of administrative and educational staff. The school is considered the first to be fully built with environmentally friendly materials in addition to using advanced electronic systems for the educational process and featuring facilities for students with special needs. And now with the latest on the local markets to the African Economic Summit. It's across to Mohammed for the latest business news. Thank you, Paul.
very good evening. You're watching the Business News on Bahrain Television. Bahrain Al-Shir Index closed at 1,171.80 points, a decrease of 0.69 below last closing. The fall was in the commercial banks and services sector, with the former representing 80% of total shares. 38 transactions included 728,120 shares worth 159,616 Bahraini dinars.